Are you guys at home looking to do your own skirtings like these? We're going to be showing you an easy step-by-step -step guide covering all aspects of skirtings so you're going to become a pro by the end of this. Right, before we start installing our skirting, we're going to run you through some of the tools you're going to need for your install. We've got here a little Dewalt miter saw. You don't need a Dewalt one, but this is a great little bit of kit. A jigsaw or a coping saw like this one. Obviously you're going to need a pencil because you need to mark a measuring tape. This is optional but we like to use it, it's mitre bond and we'll show you that in use. Some grab adhesive to stick your skirtings on the wall and obviously a hammer if you're going to be using hammer and pins to hold it in place or a nail gun if you've got one. Now we've covered the tools, I'm going to run you down what we're going to be doing in this video. So we're going to be covering external corners, scribing internal corners, how to get behind radiator pipes, how to finish at door casements or linings if you're UK, and how to do basically every step for your skirtings or baseboards if you're not in the UK. So your first step is gonna be deciding where you're gonna start. So traditionally with a scribe, which we're gonna show you how to do, it would go away from the entrance to the room. So if the entrance is behind me, we're going to put this wall in whole, no cuts, and our scribe is going to go into that piece so you can't see it visually. So as you can see, we've got ourselves some pipes here and you're not going to be able to get your skirt in behind unless you have your radiator removed. So if you don't want to do that, which we don't, get your tape measure, measure from one end as close to the pipe on this side as you can get so we're going to call it 1.4 meters or 1400 millimeters and that's what we're going to cut our piece to and when we cut our piece we're going to have a butt joint there so a square cut and here we're going to have a 22.5 angle on both pieces that's going to give us our seam it's a better seam and it's stronger so now we've got our measurement, we're just going to transfer it onto our bit of skirting. So we had 1.4 meters, you do whatever your measurement is. And then what we do is we set the bevel on our saw to zero down on the bottom plate here. And we tip the saw over to 22.5. So as is set, and then we're just going to run our saw through. And what we're going to end up with is that little angle on the end there. We then take that and we slide it behind our pipe on the left hand side until we clear the other pipe which we have now. We're going to cut the angle into the other side of our baseboard or skirting. So a good way to do this, if you look at that and mark the angle of that onto the top of our skirting like so, that's an easy reference for us so we don't get confused when we're on the saw, so we know we need to chop like this into this piece here. We're gonna cut that first before we cut the length down. Now we're cutting indoors, make sure you're cutting outside or you've got dust extraction, but because we're filming, we try and make it clear for you. So we're square on our fence. So now if you look from the top, we've got our second angle put on there. This being the longest point. So we're gonna measure that and we're gonna transfer from the longest point and put a straight cut on here. So let's do that now. So look, I'm on that wall there and I've come up to the furthest point away on our skirting, which is the face on this one. And we've got 1475. So we've now come to our piece that's got our angle on. We hook it over the end on the longest section. We come down to our measurement, 1475 for us. Right, so we're gonna take our angle out. We're gonna set it back to zero. We're on zero on the front double check we're all good and then just remember when we're cutting our blade is on the waist side so we're keeping this so we're cutting to the right hand side of our mark otherwise you'll lose the thickness of the blade now that it's all cut to size we want to check it before we start gluing or doing anything like that we just want to make sure it fits without any adhesive so all we're going to do we're going to pick it up above and then slowly slide it down into position and we're just going to check that our little mitre here is gonna be okay, so we just line that up. And as you can see, it's gonna be nice and flush. Shouldn't need any adjustment. And that seam will sit under there. And once we fill it and sand it, it'll be invisible. 
So, we've double checked everything's going to work out nicely. We've now taken it back out and we're going to use ourselves some grab adhesive. And we're just going to run it along the back like so. And then we're just going to fish this back behind. Try not to hit the wall as much as possible until we're ready to put it on. It doesn't matter if you do a little bit. So we're all the way up. And we give it a little whack and that gives the adhesive a chance to bond. And now we're going to glue the other side. So we'll get that done now. That piece is in. We've put our adhesive on the second piece. Now we're going to be using our mitre bond, or you can use wood glue, but we prefer this because it's instant. So we're going to put our glue on the easiest section, which for us is this one. And then we take our activator, which is the spray, and we're going to spray the second piece. And it's only activator, so don't worry about getting it anywhere. And then we take our piece and we slide it in. And we push it nice and flush because this will set off very quickly. It should all be on and grabbed, but if you're in the UK, you will know very well that our walls are not that straight. So this is when your hammer and nail, your little pins are gonna come into play because look, we've got a bow here and it just won't hold. Or if you've got a little 16 gauge nailer like this, this will do perfectly. So we're gonna push it back, aim down at 45 degrees, now we're gonna move on to our internal scribe. So we won't be mitering the internal corners because it's not a very good way to do it. It can come apart, it can leave gaps. This way, you're golden. So remember, if our doorway is there, we wanna be scribing in this direction so that you're never looking directly at the scribe. That's how it was traditionally done. So we take our new piece of skirt and I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to be doing and a little trick for you as well. So. What we're going to do, we're going to cut a 45 degree mitre or an angle because it's a single cut. So we're going to go towards the piece we're joining onto. So we're going to put 45 there, but we're also going to take a block, a scrap of skirting, go up and draw a line like so. And what that's going to do, if this isn't exactly 90 degrees on this wall, it will make our scribe perfect. If that's leaning, I'm being dramatic, but if that was leaning like so, the scribe wouldn't work very well. So now it's just a case of taking it to our saw and I'll show you that cut now. So the first thing we're gonna do is leave this at zero degrees and zero, and we're gonna match our blade to our line that we've just drawn on. So if it's like that, we line it up like that and then lock this off and we're all the way along that line. And then we're gonna tip the blade over to 45 degrees. That mark, that's the direction we're gonna cut in. We're gonna be cutting all of this material off. So all of this needs to go. And we're gonna be back cutting. So we're gonna be cutting it slightly back off of square. Now, a couple of ways you can do this. You can use a jigsaw. You can even use an angle grinder, but we're not gonna be doing that. We're gonna show you it with just a simple coping saw. So we're gonna get this set up somewhere and I'll just show you how to cope it out. So that's a coping saw, that's what they look like. And we're just gonna come right up to that paint line, start our saw off. And you see, I'm not exactly at 90 degrees, I'm, I'm cutting back. And we're just, just take your time and follow that paint line. And then what we do, once we come up Depending on your skirting, once we come up to a little detail like this one here, so you see how it comes in and out and around, we're then gonna come from another direction. So don't try and get it all in one, because you'll struggle with that. Just, just move the saw around. So we're gonna get that now. And then what we'll do now, we'll come around this curve and so on and so forth. What I do like to do on the top, because this has got a square top, I will actually do that at 90 degrees so that on the very top it's nice and clean and what you'll be left with is the design of your skirtings or baseboard but it'll actually be cut backwards ignore this because this is actually a double design so after you've cut your scribe and you've gone around and you've followed that little line it should 
hopefully line up like so and that's what we're looking for nice crisp little fit so once you're at this stage there's one more thing you need to do we need to put a 22.5 on the other end because we need a joining as if that's our entrance we look into the room this way we want our join to come towards us so we're going to put our 22.5 this direction so as you look the lap is the way you look so it's much more hidden so this will come this way this will come this way so you could butt joint these but the method that Phil's showing you it actually helps when the floor's unlevel or the wall is twisted to get a much better finish so putting them two 22.5s in might have bonded them together makes a much better finish so Phil's cut the two miters it's time to measure this gap it actually ends terminates on that door frame so this will just be a single measurement and we've got a measure to the furthest point on this mitre at the bottom because that's the furthest bit back and we'll take this measurement so we're going to mark that onto our board so we'll hook it over the edge and we'll mark it on the so that's the mitered edge we're going to mark it on our board and then we're going to take it over to the saw and this is actually getting a straight cut. So just a straight cut we're gonna put in the saw. Right, we've got our two pieces. So it's the same process as we did on the pipe wall. We're gonna stick our first one on with our grab adhesive. Voila. Remember guys, everything we use in the videos, including adhesive and tools, will be listed below. So if you wanna grab anything, have a check in the description. We're gonna stick this one into place. And then we're going to do the same on the other one and we're going to mitre bond the join. So once you've lined your mitre up, hammer some pins in and let that adhesive go off. Right, so we've got that long run in. Couple things to note. You're going to get a gap on top unless you've got an absolute spanking new building. Do not worry about that. You're going to put decorator's cork along the top after. You just get it as close as you can. You're never going to get it perfect. And secondly, Remember fixings like this, sockets. Don't put your nails in there because the, the cables are likely to run straight down, straight up or straight across. So avoid pinning below any sockets or light switches, etc. Now that we've got that on the wall, we're gonna show you the external corners. So we've shown you how to get behind pipes, how to do internal scribing, how to join long runs of skirting. The last lesson we're gonna be teaching you is external mitres so what you're going to want to do is get yourself an angle finder like this one from Chick Jig this is an absolute beast of a bit of kit this thing will give us our single cuts and mitre cuts and it's a standard protractor as well what we're going to do on our external mitre we're going to wrap our angle finder around until it's flat on both sides and then we will come to the mitre section on our angle finder so on Trig Jigs one, it will actually tell you mitre. So if we come there, that looks like a 45 degree angle, but it actually is 44 degrees. Now we've got our angle of 44 degrees. We're gonna lay our piece. So we've done our internal scribe that end, like we've shown you already. We're then gonna butt that up tight, take a pencil on the back side, and just mark along the side of the wall. So when we mitre this, we're gonna come away. So if you look, there's our line. We're coming away from that mark. So if we use a square, the reason we do that is if I lock that down there, you see our wall isn't straight. So we're gonna do our mitre from the furthest point, which will be there. So you'll have a tiny gap on this and it's gonna work. This will happen across all walls, they're never perfect. And then we're gonna do our 44 degree mitre away from our line. So we'll cut that now, we'll cut another one through here. So we're just gonna measure from there, scribe the line again, do exactly the same and see if they work. Now that you've cut your external mitres, just bring them to the wall first and double check before fixing them to the wall. Just make sure that the mitre lines up nice as lines up all nice and good. So what we're gonna do is lay that one down and lay this one down and we're gonna grab some, grab adhesive, as Phil's been doing in the show earlier. Right, so we're gonna fix that one into place, lining our mitre up in the corner, then we're gonna grab the other piece. Right, so we're just gonna apply some mitre bond on this external corner. 
It just helps you line up your miters a lot better than rather than just trying to glue it in place. Spray the other side. Spray, spray. Lovely stuff. Then we're going to line this miter up. So if you followed all the steps in our video, you should end up with a beautiful bit of skirting. All you've got to do at the end is run some decorator's cork along the top and the joins and it will be mustard. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.